Some motorcycles are so easy to handle that they almost feel like a bicycle. And most of it is only because of motorcycle geometry, like trail, wheelbase or center of gravity. Hi, I'm Julia, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast and vehicle dynamics engineer. And today we talk about trail and motorcycles and how trail affects the motorcycle's stability, steering and handling characteristics. There will also be a second part of this video, which will be about wheelbase and center of gravity. But now let's get started with trail. Before we go into the effect it has on the driving behavior, let's talk about the definition, which is quite simple. It is the distance between the point where the front wheel contacts the ground and the steering axis intersects the ground. There's another related size which gives us about the same information about the handling and driving steering characteristics of a motorcycle and it is the caster angle. This is the angle between the steering axis and the vertical axis of a steered wheel. How does the trail affect the driving behavior? The trail impacts the steering and stability of a motorcycle. The larger the trail gets, the more stable the motorcycle behaves and the slower the steering gets. With a shorter trail, it's the other way around. The motorcycle has less stability, but the steering gets quicker. And by the way, with the caster angle, it's the same. A larger caster angle means more stability and a smaller caster angle means less stability and a quicker steering. Depending on which use cases the motorcycles are developed for, they have a larger or a smaller trail. Sport bikes have to react quickly to steering inputs on the racetrack and therefore have a quite small trail compared to other types of motorcycles. Cruisers and choppers on the other hand should be stable for a relaxed ride. At least I think that's what chopper riders want, I'm not one of them, but this would explain why choppers have a larger trail than sport bikes. But not everyone knows how it feels like to ride a chopper or a sport bike. That's why we come to another example, which is a shopping cart. A shopping cart has no trail at all. And therefore, as you know, or can imagine, it has no stability and you can turn it quite quickly. And now let's come to the really interesting part. Why is the larger trail stabilizing? To make this more clear, I've drawn a sketch. On the left side, we see a motorcycle wheel from above. The orange point is the point where the steering axis intersects the ground. And the red point is where the motorcycle wheel contacts the ground. The distance between the two of them is called the train. On the right side, we can see a steered motorcycle wheel. In this case, it's steered to the left. In the yellow color, we see the steering angle of the wheel. And in blue, we've got the longitudinal force. This could be a force due to rolling resistance, for example, or also due to braking. But when we're riding at a constant speed, it would be a force due to rolling resistance. And what's quite important here is that the longitudinal force doesn't act on the steering axle, but it does act on the point where the motorcycle wheel contacts the ground. What's crucial for the driving behavior is the return to center torque. A torque equals a force times a pull. And in our case, the force is the longitudinal force, like the rolling resistance, and the pull is a distance called A in this example. The distance A equals the trail times the tangent of the steering angle, which means that the trail has an influence on the distance A and the distance A has an influence on the return to center torque and the return to center torque basically influences the driving behavior. A large return to center torque makes that the steering feels slower. The larger the torque, the more the motorcycle gets stabilized. And as you can tell from the formulas and the sketches, M depends on A and A depends on the trail. Which means that the trail has a direct influence on the steering behavior. If this was a bit too fast, let's look at a specific example to make things more clear. Here we've got the front wheels of two different motorcycles. On the left side, we've got a motorcycle with a small trail, a sport bike for example. 
And on the right side, we've got a motorcycle with a large trail. This could be a chopper, for example. Both bikes have the same steering angle. And also the longitudinal forces, like the rolling resistance, are the same in our example here. In the left sketch, we see that the orange and the red dot are really close together because the motorcycle has a small trail. And the distance between the two dots is the trail. But also the distance A, which is the poor for our talk, is quite small. At least way smaller than on the right side. In the middle of the page, we see the formula for the torque again. The torque equals a force times the pull. And in our case, as I said before, the force is always the same, only A, the distance, the pull changes. In the case of a small trail, A, the distance is also smaller, which means that the return to center torque is smaller as well, since F is always the same. And since the return to center torque is relevant for the stability of a motorcycle and it gets smaller with a smaller trail, the stability gets smaller as well. The tricky thing about the trail is that it can change while driving. Of course, not just like that, but when you're braking or accelerating. Since the trail affects the driving behavior, a change of the trail means a change of the driving behavior as well. When braking, the front wheel dives in and the caster angle decreases, which also means a decrease of the trail. You can also see it in the sketch when looking exactly at the size of the trail. A smaller trail comes with less stability and easier maneuverability. So we get these effects from braking. Depending on the suspension and damping setup, the geometry changes are larger or smaller. A decrease of the trail can both be wanted or unwanted, depending on the driving situation. In an emergency braking, for example, it's definitely not useful when your motorcycle has less stability. But when you deliberately brake before entering a corner, a quicker and easier steering can also be wanted. I've mentioned wheelbase and center of gravity, which are also two important factors for motorcycle geometry and will be covered in the next video. Enough trail gives you stability in usual driving situations. But when you've reached the physical limit, you might want some extra systems on board to help you out, like a traction control system. Learn more about this in the video that I've linked here.